So one of the things we've been doing here at HEC is thinking about how to use these different meshing tools in some common modeling situations. And you know, we're still not really at best practices yet, but we have learned some things. And so one of the things I'm gonna do in this video is just show you a few of the things I've learned about a very common modeling situation, how I'm starting to think about building a mesh at a river junction. All right, so I'm going to create a new project and uh oh, I only have a train. I don't have a projection. What am I gonna do? Well, one of the cool things about the new projection tools in RAS is it'll strip a projection off of just about anything. Anything that can be projected has projection data in it. You don't need just, just need a PRJ file. The projection tool can go and strip that off of about anything. And this TIFF file has a projection in it. So I'm just gonna drag that over here and I'm gonna call this trib demo and create and I have projection. And so again, I'm gonna go in and you know, make my train. We have other videos on this, so I'll do it quickly and I'll just pull that train over in here. I will import it and I have my train. Okay, so I have this junction right here that I'm gonna work on. And now just to kind of take a step back, uh, another thing that we found here is that there is some diversity in how we use these new tools, like just even how we start out. Um, a very common way to start out is to just make a big mesh to start out with, just a one arc mesh, um, almost like you're starting with a new perimeter and mapper. Go in and put in your boundary conditions, see what gets wet and refine it from there. One of the things I like to do is actually invert that problem, is to start with a channel and move out. And just because of what we're showing here today, that's what I'm gonna do. And so I want to model this junction right here. And so let's zoom in. Oh, I'm gonna create a geometry and then I'll build my conceptual mesh. And we'll do this pretty quickly because we have other videos on this. But you know, I need an upstream face and then I'll just kind of track this to here, I have a downstream face, and then I'll just kind of track this channel up here. And because it's a channel, I'm going to use quads. You can go see the other videos on the difference between quads, but it's actually going to become important. I'm going to say my quad length is 100, and I want five of them wide. And if, when I make that mesh, that's what it looks like. Pretty good. Okay, so now I want to bring this tributary in. And so I'm gonna split this here. Now, how do you split this? You might wanna right click. That's not how we do things in, uh, in RAS 2025. You're gonna press control. This is one of the key things you really need to know because there isn't a button to do this. When you press control, you see how that splits this? And so you can double click now and you're connected to that. And so I'm just gonna also give this tributary four sides. Why am I giving it four sides? Because I want to use quads. And if you use quads, it's just best to have four sides. And you can see that this will automatically notice that it's going to complete that and reconnect. Okay, so I want to use quads here, but here's the trick, is that you want the width scale, which is just the, the, going to be the side with a smaller aspect ratio, to have the same as this length scale because they're going to try to sync up. So I'm going to go with my width scale of 100 and I'll keep that length scale at 100 too. And so then when I regenerate the mesh, these will try to sync up along that arc. Okay, so then I can just, you know, I'm going to make the rest of the model with triangles. Again, this is a pretty simple model, so I'm not going to be too precious about this, but we'll just go in and give it some overbanks. Then I'll call these 100 foot triangles and 100 foot triangles, regenerate the mesh, and we have a mesh. Um, that mesh is pretty coarse. So let's go in and double the resolution, which is having it. So I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna say, okay, uh, regenerate mesh, and there we go. Uh, we have a pretty nice connection here. So one of the things I don't love here is that even though these cells sync up well with the channel, because I need a constant number of flow path channels, essentially, we get very small cells up here at the boundary. And I'd like to relax that. I'd like the ability to collapse and expand cells. And so one of the things that you can do is you can go in here to the region itself and the quad size tolerance, that's a number between one and zero. And that'll let you actually expand or contract internally. I'm gonna go ahead and move that to 0.3. 
And if I regenerate the mesh, you'll see that now at various places in this mesh, we expand and contract. But we still need the same number of cells at the downstream end as we have at the upstream end. So we have one other thing we have to relax. If we come in here and select this upstream arc, what we'll see is this auto adjust spacing that enforces the same number of upstream and downstream cells on the quad. So if I relax that, then I get a region that goes from kind of one cell or could be multiple cells and then expands into the appropriate number of cells to sync up at the tributary. So that's a pretty good mesh, but the one thing we don't love about this mesh is you know, you've got flow coming down here and you've got big cells transitioning into these little cells. So there's a couple of ways you could do about that. If you want to relax the cell size, you can come in here and say, okay, I want to make these cells bigger in the width. Remember, you don't want to make them bigger in the length because that's matched up. But I want to make them bigger in the width, so I'm going to double them. Nope, this is like a SAT question, right? And it, since it's the count, in order to make them bigger, you need to have the count. And you could probably go in and actually set that to three, and that would give you a pretty good cell size transition from your tributary in there. Oh, but okay, but that's pretty coarse. So let's actually go back and set that to 10. And there we have our, our transition. Um, and what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna come over here. And again, you don't wanna mess with your width because those widths are synced up, but we can have our cell size in this direction. And now we have a pretty good transition from the tributary into the main stem. And so those are just some initial thoughts about how I'm thinking about setting up these junction models where you have tributaries coming together with the current meshing tools in RAS 2025.